This is Andy Paul off ID Boxing. I'm joined by Richie Woodall out here in Saudi Arabia. Richie, we've just seen a weighing for Jake Paul and Tommy Fury, both on the scales, both make weight. What did you make of them up there? I thought it was um, quite an entertaining weighing, to be quite honest. I think um, I think Tommy Fury looks in really good condition, to be quite honest. If you look at the two physiques of the boxers, then it's hard really to gauge um, Jake Paul. We don't know too much about him. We obviously know he can, he can bang a bit. He's a bit, a bit of a puncher. But in terms of... Uh, the condition, how they looked. I thought Tommy Fury looked in really good shape, so uh, that's a good sign. Uh, a couple of days ago at a press conference, some people suggested Jake looked a little nervous at the face-off. You saw them face-off today, did you get that same impression? No, I didn't. I thought Jake Paul handled it pretty well and where he spoke. Um, yeah, I think um, he re he's relishing it, I think, and uh, he took it in his stride. I thought both boxers sort of... Um, Reacted differently, obviously. Tommy's really pumped up for it, which, you know, can be a good sign. Um, he's, he's certainly, um, you can see he's trained hard and, yeah, emotionally, yeah, I think he's got his mind on the job. Jake Paul, obviously, this really is, is sort of new to him in, in, in many respects. I think with Tommy, he's been in and around his brother, obviously, in world title fights, so he's probably used to certain pressures and that this sort of environment. For Jake Paul, this is a new thing, but having said that, I thought he handled it okay. On the Tommy Fury front, and well, Jake as well, both of them have said they want to stop each other. And we're looking at Tommy specifically. We've seen, you know, during his career and in certain fights, so maybe he's looked for that, that knockout punch a little too much. What does he have to do in his case to ensure that he doesn't go looking for it and he can set that up? Well, that's it. Like I say, um, judging them on the, on the scales and, and, and the face-off, and that obviously... They're red, they're, I think they're both ready for it, but that can that can play then into the contest itself. For me, I think in the build-up to this fight, Jake Paul has tried to get under Tommy Fury's skin. I think he wants him to, to literally, when the bell goes, he wants to he wants him to come forward at him because that gives obviously Jake Paul a better chance to, to land a big shot. If he, if he, if they trade and they exchange, especially at sort, sort of sort of mid-range, um, Tommy Fury on the other hand. I think if he he wants obviously to get a knockout, but it's the way he does that. And if he if he's patient and starts off nice and long and boxes safe with a bit of caution, and then gradually get into the fight and try and break Jake Paul down, I think that would be the best option for me anyway to box sensibly early and then go for a stoppage probably later on. That would probably be the icing on the cake. But we'll see how it goes. You never know what's going to happen in, in a contest, especially one as big as this. When the bell goes, boxers sometimes can do their own thing and the game plan can go out the window. So it's probably a test for both boxers mentally when that bell goes, who can stick to the game plan. Richie, we've seen Carl Frotch um, start to get involved in a, a war of words with Jake Paul and throwing his hat in the ring for potentially a fight there. What have been your thoughts on seeing Carl entertain that? Um, well, obviously, it's with, with Jake Paul, isn't it? So if Jake Paul comes through this, I think my message to him would be stay, stel, stay well clear of... Uh, Carl Frotch, because even Frotch, obviously, now he's not as young as he was, but still, he's in good shape. He looks in good nick. The Cobra has still got that punch, and uh, yeah, he's a fighting man, isn't he? And uh, I'd certainly stay away from him. Uh, and Richie, just away from the main event, give your thoughts on a couple of the topics. We saw the WBC release their findings and their report over Conor Ben a couple of days ago. What have you made of what they found, and obviously, clearing his name from their side of things? I don't really want to go into too much about Conor Ben, um, obviously because I know his dad pretty well and it's a situation that I hope will be resolved um, at some point. Obviously he's getting a bit of stick from fighters, but I'm not going to add fuel to the fire, so I'll just, 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 just stay neutral with it to be honest. That's fair enough, Richie, and we'll move on from kind of then. And one final topic, uh, we've seen Chris Eubank Jr. officially invoke his rematch clause with Liam Smith. A surprise to you all? Yeah, that will depend for me on, on what weight they both will come in at for the second fight because I think there were certain signs there that maybe Chris Eubank he either hasn't done the, the weight right or he was struggling at the weight. That's taking nothing away from Liam because Liam did a job on him and Liam was really confident that he, that he would, you know. Um, so it'll just all depend. I think the heavier the contest is, obviously there's a better chance for Chris Eubank. But he's up against it. Liam Smith's a quality kid. And if it's maybe four or five pounds extra, I'd still go Liam Smith. Although Chris Eubank Jr., you know, he's got more of a chance of, of a victory if it's a heavier contest. If it's at the same weight, then again, it would be Liam all day long.
Well, Richie, we'll leave that there now. You've enjoyed the rest of your time here in Saudi Arabia. Thank you. Cheers, mate. Thank you.